Now, are you a DIYer or a apprentice or trainee, plumber or gas engineer looking to learn how to solder? Well, this is the right video for you. So in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the full process of soldering copper pipes. We're going to look at the different types of gases and the blow lamps. We're going to look at the fluxes. We're going to look at the solders. We're going to learn how to solder vertically, horizontally, and we're also going to be pressure testing our jobs. So let's get on with it. Well, there are two differences in the torches. We have kind of a, a big nozzle and we have a smaller nozzle. Now these aren't, technically these aren't your domestic blow lamps. You can get smaller nozzles than these, but these are what the modern plumber gas engineer uses now. But the main difference is the two types of gas we use. So this one, what's in here is propane. And what we've got in here is what's called map gas. Now map gas stands for three big long names, which I'm never going to try and say. So I'll tell you what, I'll put them down here and you can read what map stands for. So done that now. But the main difference with these is the map gas is a lot hotter than the propane. But we also have a propane butane mix as well, which is in a red bowl. But we haven't got one of them, so we're just going to talk about these two. So our flame temperature for the map gas is about 2,925 degrees C, which is about 5,300 degrees F if you're American. And for the propane, we've got 2,820 degrees C or 5,110 in American money. So there's also an ignition temperature difference. So the ignition temperature for that is 920 degrees F or 497 degrees centigrade. And for the propane, we're on 689 degrees Fahrenheit or 365 degrees centigrade. Now flammability limits. So for natural gas, we've got the five to 15% gas in air mix. So for the map gas, we've got three to 11% gas in air. And for the propane, we've got uh, 1.5 to 10.9% gas in air. So that's our flammability limits. So one thing you've got to do is be very careful when you're transporting this in your van because it can blow the roof off your van. So plumbers, gas engineers should be smoking in the vans because of carrying these dangerous things in the back just in case they're leaking. Now, map gas, basically when this came out was a replacement for acetylene or a safer gas than acetylene. Um, but now it hasn't got acetylene in it. It's got cheaper chemicals in it so it's got propylene in there it's actually got 99.5% propylene and the other 0.5% is okay this is a more expensive than this one and this one's as we see from the results is a lot hotter than this one but really when you turn them on you can see a slight difference in color but that's about it you'd never be able to tell from the temperature so i would use this one on my small bore pipes so my 15 22 and i would use this one on the larger sizes the 28 the 32 the 35 but really i should have the bigger nozzle on this one and the smaller nozzle on this one but i've gone the other way around because i basically use this on everything and it can get too hot on 15 mil if you've got the bigger nozzle. So that's a look at the gases. So why don't we do something like soldering with them? Let me just explain how these blow lamps, how you work them. So first of all, this red button here, there's two things. First of all, that's your ignition. Second, if you twist it, it becomes a lock. Okay, so if I'm looking at, if you're looking at it from the front, I twist it anti-clockwise, unlocks it, and I twist it clockwise, locks it. Next thing is, what happens is when you press the button in, you have to keep your finger on it. So there is another lock on the top here, which you press down, which keeps the flame on for you. So you press the button in, press the button down, let your finger off. That keeps it on. This here is the adjuster for the gas. That's putting more gas in. That's putting less gas in. This is where the air for combustion comes in. So this is your pre-air here. So these little holes you can see around the side there is where your air comes in for combustion. And if you block those off, you will get incomplete combustion. So that shows your air. 
you get incomplete combustion now. So your air goes in there, mixes with the gas, blends in there, gets ignited at the end and lights. So that's how these blow lamps work. Now, before we get into doing a bit of soldering, let's have a look at what we're going to be using. Now the solder we're going to be using is this one. This one is lead solder. The other type of solder you can buy is lead free solder. Now the difference between lead and lead free solder is this is pure lead and lead free is a mixture of copper and zinc. Now the melting point of this or the melting temperature of this is 183 degrees C or 361 degrees in old money but for the lead free it's 217 degrees C or 422 degrees Fahrenheit. So this one melts at a lower temperature. So technically you need less gas. Also, you get twice as much lead solder as you do for lead free, and it's also half the price. So it's a bargain. Now people say, because it's lead, you get poisoned from it, so we can't use it. Well, we can't use lead solder on potable drinking water. Fluid category one and two, hot and cold water. Everything else, gas, central heating pipes, we can use lead solder. But if that was put in the water, the lead could dissolve into the water and that's where you could get your lead poisoning. So that's why we can't use it on uh, fluid category one and two, but we can use it on gas and central heating. It's a lot easier to work with as well. Now then, the fluxes. Now this is the dangerous bit. So breathing in, even though they say on the tubs and you, and you look at the, the cost sheets and everything, they say they're not toxic in well ventilated areas so when you're soldering guys make sure the room's well ventilated i always find you always have an horrible taste in your mouth um, when you've been soldering but uh, you should eat it no don't eat it anyway so there's loads of different stuff so this is what was about when i was uh, an apprentice which was this stuff traditional craftsman's flux looks like grease then along came which was like revolutionary uh, power flux which is like this white paste. Now this is what we call active all the time. So it's got, even though they say it's not acid based, it's, an, it's got an irritant in it, it's got some way of cleaning the pipe, but it's active when it's hot or cold. This is my preferred flux, which is Laco flux. I think this is the best on the market. And again, this is like a, a, a runnier paste. But this is only heat active, so this is allowed on gas. But if you read all the stuff for this, it doesn't say it's allowed for gas. Potable water, yes, this is potable water and gas. And then there's a new one on the market, which is the Everflow, <laughs> which is proper thick. Get that? And again, this can be used on, this is heat active, it can be used on gas, water, air, anything you want. So picking the right flux is up to you, whatever you want to use. Um, I prefer this, but all the rest are just as good. The main thing what the flux does is it stops oxidisation between the, the fitting and the pipe. So I've got a piece of 22 mil pipe and I've got a, a, a T, an equal T. So you can see how that is a lot darker than that one because that one is oxidized and that one's not as oxidized as much as that one. But they've still both oxidized, so we need to clean them before we flux them. Now, before we get started, the most important safety pieces of equipment we're ever gonna use are these, which are the safety glasses. So we're gonna put these on. Now, what we're gonna to use to clean the pipe is this. This is wire wool. And again, a lot of engineers don't like using wire wool because they get little bits in the fingers and they wear gloves. Now, again, a lot of engineers wear gloves. I don't wear gloves at all. Never have done something I can't work with gloves on. I like to feel what I'm doing. Anyway, uh, so you, there's other things you can use. You can use Henry cloth, you can use um, Henry paper, and you can even use one of these sponges if it was brand new. So even one of these sponges will <laughs> clean the pipe up. But I don't think anything's as good as using wire wool. Again, some guys use Henry paper, which I find Henry paper always like leaves little scratches in it. So I'll clean it with the wire wool of this end. So if you get yourself a big chunk and put it in your hand and spin the pipe, you don't get the little bits in your fingers. So we need to clean the pipe and we also need to clean the fittings. Now that's a 22 milli equal T, if you don't know what that one of them is. That is a 22 15, 22, see? 
15 on the branch. That's what we call a 22 male female elbow. And that's your standard 90 degree, some call them a knuckle elbows. Guys call them all different kinds of names. So again, we need to clean inside the elbow. So I just get my finger, and there's loads of cleaning brushes as well. So there are loads of little implements you can have out there which will clean the pipe and the fittings for you, which speeds it up a little bit. And you get internal and external. But I'm an old fart. You know, I remember my dad saying, ooh, this plastic pipe will be the end of plumbing when I was an apprentice. And I'm going to my son, who's also a gas engineer, this press fit will be the end of plumbing. So plumbing's evolving, we need to keep up, and I try to keep up. So, I've cleaned it. Other types of fittings we have are what's called integral solder ring fittings, where the lead-free solder is actually inside the fitting, and technically all you have to do is heat up the fitting to melt the solder, and you don't really need to add any solder, but everybody always does. So that's integral solder ring, which are called Yorkshire in the trade. Now, one of the things you shouldn't do after you've cleaned it is start putting your hand on it. You're transferring now your sweaty, greasy, horrible hand onto the pipe. So keep your fingers out of the fittings and out of the pipework. Now, flux in. You read all the manuals, they tell you to use a flux brush, get it on there, and then just liberally place it onto the pipe. Now that's what they say in all the instruction books, all the manufacturer's instructions, all the training manuals, they'll all tell you to use a flux brush. You should never ever go inside the fitting. They say you should never do that. And there's no need to put flux inside the fitting and on the pipe. And then when I put the fitting into there, I give it a twist. Now, other guys say, the excess you've got there. Let me just find a cloth. Now, what they say is, wipe off that excess flux, because you don't want it running down the pipe once you solder it up. I personally don't do that. But for some reason now, guys on the internet like to polish the pipes. They like to use Brasso on the pipes. They like to make it all look nice and shiny. I think if I was a customer, I'd rather it didn't leak than it looking nice and shiny. Anyway, so I need another piece of pipe in there, so I'm gonna use my pipe slices. Now, when you're soldering, you should always fill every hole, uh, fitting without a pipe inside it. And that's because you'll oxidize it as soon as you put heat on it. We're cutting using pipe slices, and what I've done is I've slid the pipe slices on and where the cutter is, I'm twisting the pipe slice to the direction of the cutter. There's also a directional arrow on there. So it cuts through it. If I do it the other way, so if I put it on and I twist it the opposite way, it comes off. So if I go towards the rollers, it will come off. If I go towards the wheel, it will cut it. Okay. So that's using pipe slices. After cutting the pipe, we use a deburring tool to deburr the inside of the pipe to stop any restriction from the burr. What I need to do now is clean my end of pipe up again, but not with a rag, <laughs> with a wire hole. Duh. So I'm gonna clean that up again. I've already done the fitting. So I'm gonna do what the manufacturers tell us to do, uh, the training manuals, and that is just apply the flux onto the pipe. So now I can put it in, give it a twist, jobs are good in. So as you can see this is what happens if you don't use any flux. So the solder just melts but doesn't actually suck in. So it just ends up falling off the pipe. Now I'm lucky I've got a vice here. I'm not going to use map gas, that's a bit extreme. Even I'm going to use the propane. Now then, depends on whether you're left or right handed or who trained you. Depends on whether your blow lamp goes in your left hand and the solder goes into your right. Uh, it makes no odds whatsoever. Now the other thing is how much solder do we use? Now 
again, what they see in the training manuals is the diameter of the pipe. So the diameter of the pipe, if you put it onto the pipe and you bend the solder on the diameter of the pipe, that's how much solder you require for 22 mil. And you would do the same for 15 and 28. Now, when I'm soldering, you don't have the heat. You don't need that much. No need for that. So you have a nice flame. Remember, this is a big torch. And I'm going to place the heat onto the bottom. And you'll see the, sol the, the flux run around. Now, what I do is I just dab it until it starts to run. Until I start to feel it starting to run. And that's it. That's gone all the way around. Okay. So what that's done is, it's called capillary attraction. When you've got two metals the same together, you apply the heat, it creates a suction. Okay. Capillary attraction. And that's how the solder sucks into the fitting. So it goes all the way in. Never ever dunk it in water or use a wet cloth to cool it straight away. You need to leave at least 30 seconds to a minute. And now in that time while it's hot, you could get some wire wool and just wipe it to get rid of your excess on your fitting. Now, if you are gonna use a rag to cool it, make sure the rag is warm. Don't use freezing cold water before you cool it off. Now, let's have a look at this fitting closer. Now, I don't know whether you can see that but that's the fitting, it's still hot. <laughs> that's the fitting, it's gone all the way around. And you could see how little I used. Now, is it the neatest bit of soldering you've ever seen in your life? No. Will it leak? I bloody hope not. Now, let's have a try of soldering vertically. When you're soldering vertically, Again, you need to put the heat on the opposite side of where you want to put the solder. Now, uh, if this is the front of the pipe, I always feed the solder into the back. So if it does run down the back, the customer's never going to see it. So if I put it round the front, and again, I'll dip down so you can see. I'm putting the nozzle just on the fitting here. And I don't waft. There's no wafting in our job. And I'm just keeping the heat there. And again, I'm just waiting until it starts to suck up. And then I can get my wire wool. And I can just brush it. And again, I hardly used any solder. It's called overfeeding when you use too much solder. You don't want to be doing that. Now, this is the hardest bit of soldering is when you're soldering vertically. As long as you haven't got what we call snots in the trade running down the pipe, does it really matter what it looks like? The customer's not going to go, wow, that's amazing. You've got no snots on your pipe. They haven't got a clue. What they're going to say is, can I box those shiny pipes in because they look horrible? And you've just spent half an hour with your brasso cleaning it up and your customer wants it boxing in. You'll do your best pipe work in the, in the world, it'll be straight, you'll do perfect passovers, everything will look amazing to you, but to your customer, it looks like a load of ugly pipes. So they don't care if it's shiny or not. So what's the point? The point is, is it sucked all the way in? Is it completely waterproof? And is it gonna be like that for the next 100 years? That's what you're worried about, not whether it's shiny or not. So let's have a closer look at this. Okay, so you can see it's gone all the way around. And that's what we're interested in. Has that solder gone all the way around? What I'm gonna show you now is what happens if you overheat the fitting. So I've got the map gas here. Okay, so this is the hottest thing I've got. I'm gonna put it on full burn. I'll explain what I'm doing because you probably got here. I'm going to put it on full burn and I'm going to keep the heat on the fitting. Let's see what happens to the fitting and then I'm going to try and put some solder on it. So, here goes. 
So I'm just pointing the nozzle at the fitting like you would do. And you can start to see the flux is burning off. So that smoke you can see there is the flux. Now I didn't overfeed it with flux. This is why you need it well ventilated. So this fitting now is getting pretty hot. And what I've done is I've boiled away all the flux. And what's happening is we're not getting capillary attraction now. It's just kind of <laughs> just kind of falling off like I've not used any flux whatsoever. You see that just falling off? So that's what happens if you <coughs> overheat the fitting. So you can see the colour it's gone now. This is what's called annealing. So that makes the fitting incredibly soft now. You can literally squeeze that now with the grips and it makes it incredibly soft. Easy damaged. So don't overheat the fitting because it'll just leak. Now we're going to do soldering vertical against a wooden wall. So this is combustible material. So all the ways about the health and safety we need to think about how we're going to protect this from burning. So we could use one of these. So this is a heat mat. Now it's heat proof, heat resistant, not, it's not going to set on fire. So be careful with that and we could slide that behind the back of there, protecting the wood. We could also use this stuff, which is really good stuff. This is a, a cool gel which you can spray around, but again, we're not directing the flame at it, it's only heat proof. You're not going to put the full flame at it. So I've set this little experiment up to prove how good the gel is. So this piece of hemery paper on the left has got no gel on it. The one on the right has the gel on it. This is a matte gas flame and you can see I'm virtually touching the, the paper and it's not setting on fire. Touch this one, it sets on fire instantly. Now I need to find a place where the gel still is because the gel's evaporating and you can still, it's still protected. So this is the results, so you can see the one on the right is not set on fire. The other thing is we might need one of these. Well, this is a CO2 fire extinguisher. You could also use a water fire extinguisher because it's wood. We've got electrics around here so you wouldn't really want to be using water. I'm going to show you now how to solder vertically against a wall. Now again, what I've done is I've cleaned the pipe, I've cleaned the fittings, I've put the flux using my flux brush just around the, the pipe, I've put them together, then I've wiped off the excess uh, flux on the bottom. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to put the blow lamp on this side, so I'm not directing it at the wood, I'm going to put it on this side and I'm going to feed the solder in from around the back here. So if it does drip down, the customer's never going to see it. So let's have a go at that now. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to be starting with the one at the top because if you start it at the one at the bottom, when you start doing the top, all the solder will run out. So I'm going to use matte gas for this one. So we've got the flame on quite low. I'm pointing the flame at the back of the fitting. And I'm going to feed the solder in from round the back there. Again. I'll just wait until it gets hot enough. Now for the bottom one. Again. So again, leave it for 30 seconds before you start cleaning it up. And you can see there's no solders run down the pipe. So 
let's get that pressure tested. Now I've got it all rigged up and set up for pressure testing. So to do the pressure test we need to pressurise it to one and a half times working pressure for an hour if it was on site, if we didn't have plastic pipe in there. There's two other tests you should do with plastic pipe uh, but I'll explain those later or in other videos. So I'm just going to put three bar in for now and see if our soldered joints actually are soldered okay. Bear with me. Well, I've actually put five bar in and we'll have a closer look in a minute. So if this was on site I'd have to leave it for an hour and make sure no pressure dropped or I had no leaks but my solder looks okay, no leaks. Now one of the things you can't do is solder a fitting up while there's water in your pipe. Because what happens is the water takes all the heat out of the pipe which stops the solder getting up to melting point and being drawn in by the capillary attraction. So I've got a little experiment lined up to show you what happens. So let's have a look at that. Now we're going to do a little experiment. So uh, don't try this at home children unless you're supervised by an adult. I am a trained professional. Anyway, so before we do anything, we need to put on our safety glasses. Here we have a plastic bag. Other supermarkets are available. Now, if I cut the corner off here, so I got to cut the corner off here, and I take my blow lamp, and I just touch the bag, you can see how easy the bag sets on fire and melts. So let's put the fire out, so now you know why we're near the kitchen sink. Right, what I'm going to do now is, I'm going to fill this plastic bag with water. The plastic bag is acting as if it's the pipe full of water. <laughs> it does have holes in this though, this bag, to stop you suffocating if you put it over your head. And this is the only bag I could find with only a few holes in. So if I take the blow lamp down, and I put it on under the water you can see the bag isn't melting because of the water inside the bag so that's what would happen with your pipe so a bit of an extreme experiment but you can see it won't warm that water up. So that's what happens in the bottom of the pipe. The pipe warms the water up, the water then starts to evaporate and boil inside there, which turns to steam, and no matter what you do, you're never gonna get solder to run inside that pipe. So you need to make sure when you're soldering a pipe that there's no water in the bottom of it at all. I just wanna finish off with a few little hacks and a few little tricks I've learned over the years of doing this job. Now one of them is, this pipe is, don't know whether you can see that, completely full right to the top with water and we want to solder this fit in here. So we need to get rid of that water. Well there are a few things we can do, a few things we can use. Get a scrap piece of pipe, slide it, well the next size down from you want to empty, so we slide that all the way down to the bottom. Some of the water will come out because of the displacement. You stick your thumb over the end, you pull it out, and it will empty the water for you. So down to the bottom, stick your thumb out, and that will empty the water all the way down to the bottom. Another way you could use is, let me go and get it, a manometer tube. So you could slide your manometer tube in, and one of the things you don't want to be doing, if that isn't possible water, is sucking. You can blow the water out. So that's another way you could do it, but it's a bit messy that way. Or you could do the same thing again. You could slide that in, put your finger over the hole, and you can get the water out that way. So loads of different ways to get water, but it's important to get rid of that water. Now the next one is getting olives off without a, a removal tool. So basically, I'm just going to you're going to take the nut off. So we've got left with a brass olive. To get the olive off, just get your grips, gently squeeze, and pull it off. How easy was that? 
Okay, and you can now remove that. It's a lot easier with brass olives than it is with copper olives, but you can still do it with copper olives. Don't need a removal tool. 